What's up YouTube family? So today we're going to be doing another video with the DTF hack. The last time I did the video, I did show you guys how I did it and how it turned out. But there's two things that I did not show you that I just now seen that makes a difference with the DTF hack. I want to take you guys into another round of us doing the DTF hack with the sublimation but in a different way also i was getting some questions about the setting that i use i know i did like a voiceover so i was talking a little fast in the voiceover um so you guys didn't really get to see in depth of the settings that i use for it now i know everybody probably does their settings differently so if you have any other alternatives or anything just shoot them down in the comments and let me know so I don't want to take too much time in this video. So we're going to just jump right into it. And I'm going to take you guys over to the setup and let's get started. So to get started, I'm just going to jump in here to um, Canva. And we're going to go to one of the designs that I already have. Um, So this is some things that I already been working on. We're going to start with a clean one and just go from there. So I go to my uploads and I go to the design that I want to use, which is going to be this one right here. It says moody before coffee. I am going to do this is a 14 by 14. Um, just because I want to make sure my design is big enough so it can fit the page and fit on the t-shirt. So we're going to label this test print for. Now I, I do have to download the image first and I do have to make the background transparent and it is a PNG file. So if you guys want more, um, a more of a tutorial for the Canva and how I maneuver through that, that can be a separate video, but I'm not going to go through that in this video because it'll be too much. Um, it'll take too much time. <clears throat> All right. So we are going to go ahead and set up the settings. So I'm going to go to print right here. So as you can see, I do have it set at the Epson printer. I am, I could use my last settings, but I'm not going to do that just because I want to start from scratch and show you guys um, the settings that I use. So I do go down to the, um, actually, no, for this, where it says the present, press presets you want to keep that as default setting you don't want to mess with that at all <clears throat> so you do want to just go down here to and most people do this differently i'm going to leave it at u.s letter um just so it could you know be regular size paper and i'm going to keep it as a uh, portrait because it's going to automatically print and landscape when it comes out so for me, I want to make this image bigger. So what I'm going to do is I want to scale this a little bit bigger. You see how it did change just because I want to make the image bigger. I'm not, I might just, I might not even scale it because if I try to make it any bigger than this and it's going to print out that way. Oh, so it will let me do it this way. So I think I want to make it at, let's see if we could do 65. Okay. Let's try my hand with 68. All right. So I'm going to leave it at 68%. I'm not going to mess with it no more because I don't want it to cut off at the edges. So I do want to leave it here. You don't have to change your layout if you don't want to. You don't have to scale. You don't have to change the scale image size either if you don't want but if you do want the image bigger, you do want to go ahead and change the sizing um, of your image just so it can be bigger when you print it on your shirt. So, or if you try to do fill entire paper, it might cut off at the edges. So I would, if I were you, I would scale it. I wouldn't do fit entire paper. 
So now, now this is where we get into the meat and potatoes. You do want to go to, you do want to go to, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to our color options. You don't have to do it in this order. I'm just doing it in this order, but you don't have to. So with the color options, you do want to go to advanced setting. I'm going to go out of it just so you can see what I'm doing. So it's going to probably pop up looking like this. You want to go to advanced setting. And then you want to go ahead and go to, you don't want to mess with this right here. You don't have to mess with any of that. You want to go to mode. When you go to mode, you want to put it in Adobe RGB and you want to keep the gamma at 2.2. I don't usually mess with anything right here. Um, and my print still comes out vibrant and good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to my paper handling um, you don't really need to do anything with the paper handling either. A lot of these settings you don't really need to mess with. So let's just jump right into print and settings. The main thing, two things you want to mess with is the color options and you want to mess with the print settings. So let's go to the print settings. We want to keep the quality high. So you want to go to quality and you do want the quality you do want the best quality so it should have said high quality i'm not sure why it's not saying it now but when you print this out you want the quality to say high and yours should say high quality this is the part where i was saying about the um the type of paper you want to print it on go to the premium presentation um paper mat no i'm sorry go to uh presentation you know paper mat sorry um go there let's do premium instead we're gonna do the premium setting so this is where it'll show the best quality so keep it at best quality so it can print good and then you also want don't not forget to mirror the image you want to make sure you mirror the image because if you don't mirror the image it's going to come out backwards when you go to print it on the paper so people are going to be reading it backwards they're not going to read it um, the correct way so once that is all done you want to hit print now I jumped the gun and started to mess with my print settings but what I did not do was load my printer up with the proper paper so we're going to jump into that so I can show you guys how to line up your paper and what you want to do with that okay so what I use is the DTF transfer film the ASAP that's the one I use. You guys can use different brands, but I use these. I'll link these two in the video if you guys want to get these. Um, you actually can get them um, in Amazon. And you know with Prime, you get two-day shipping. So, all right. So, with your DTF film, you want to make sure that you're printing it on the right side. Now, you do have a rough side and you have a smooth side. You want to double check what side is more rough than the other because that's the side that you want to print on. But what you guys are going to do is when you, because this won't automatically print through the machine because we're doing a hack and it's going through like a regular printer, it's not going to come through the print like you would expect it to, like um, a card stock paper or like a regular plain sheet of paper would. So what you wanna do is you want to take your paper and line it up with a piece of printing paper or something like a cardstock, just something thick enough where it will run through the printer and the printer will recognize um, what's being printed. You don't want to put too much tape on the DTF paper because your image will print on that tape. So you wanna make sure you keep it close to the edge as possible what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to line my paper up and I'm getting it close to the edge as possible. And then
All right, so your paper should look like this when you're done. Now, my paper is not really matching up like e evenly, so I only taped it here and here, but if your paper matches up evenly, you can tape it around the sides, but just make sure, that, or you can even cut this off too if you want. So now we're gonna take this to the printer. I forgot to, okay. So when you load this bad boy, Here's the DTF film right here. You, you're not going to lay this side down. You're going to lay your paper, whatever you use to attach to the DTF film, that's the side that you're going to lay this down on. So when you insert it into the printer, it's going to, I mean, not lay it down. I'm sorry, y'all. You're going you're gonna to lay the DTF film side down and your the cardstock or the paper is going to be facing up. So you want to put it in like this so that when that image comes through, it's going to print on the other side. All right. So we're going to lay this down. And we're going to go ahead and now we're going to go ahead and print our image. So all we got to do is do print because we already did the settings. So then we just got to print it. And once this is done printing, you guys will see how that comes out. Okay, so it has printed. We are removing it from the printer. And as you guys can see, the image is so beautiful and so vibrant. You don't want to touch any of this ink because you will smear it. And you do want to hurry up and get it to the powder so that way the ink doesn't dry. So we're going to go ahead and get it to the powder and coat this. And this is where I show you the... Um, trick that I found out to make this more better um, for the hack okay okay so we're gonna go ahead and coat this so it doesn't dry on us and you want to make sure you get the DTF powder all over the paper but make sure you do not touch the ink because you still have a chance of it smearing so you want to just coat it. Okay. All right. So make sure you take that white sheet off. You can cut around this if you want and the way that you know that all this is coated is if um you see that it looks a little dull that's how you know that all of it is coated so we're going to put it under the heat for i usually do mine for 200 i mean 400 degrees um for two all right so let's Try not to hit this because this will automatically press. If you have the HTV Ront, do not hit the R button for start because what you will do is you will close this on the image and it will um, mess up the plate of your heat press and it's going to just smash the image. So don't do that. So we're just going to wait for two minutes. So when it's all nice and coated, this is what you should have when you're done coating the powder. So you shouldn't have no leftover powder on here. Every, the color should have gotten darker and more vibrant. That is how you know the powder has cured the image. But I noticed that people do the coating one time. And here's where I do it twice just to secure that image. So I'm gonna go ahead and cure this one more time for you guys to see. Okay, so this is just me coating the image one more time. So I've done it once 
and this is the second time that I'm doing it. So I'm going to go ahead, repeat the same process. You can do this next step, if you, extra step if you want. You don't have to, but I feel like it makes it better when you do it twice. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it one more time. Shake all the excess powder off. And I'm going to put this in the heat. So, and I also wanted to show y'all the powder that I use is the DTF powder um, from ASAP. I will link this in my, um, comp the section below so you guys can see if you want to get this as well. This powder is really good. It doesn't have a smell or anything to it and it, ver it works really well with um, my DTF transfers. So, I think I'm going to stick with this and... Yeah, so I'm just cleaning up this uh, leftover powder because I no longer need this. And so after we heat that a second time, we're going to just go ahead and heat up our shirt. All right. All right, so the image is heated for a second time. And it did no harm to it by doing it a second time. So again, if you want... You can do it a second time, but you don't have to. Okay, here I am just, um, all I'm doing is just now I'm placing the image on the shirt where we want it. And then from there, we're going to press it for a few minutes. Well, about one minute. And because this is a cold peel, we don't want to mess with this until the entire image has cooled down. So once your entire image cools down, then you can go ahead and lift it. But the most important part of this video that I wanted to show you guys was that I coated the image twice. And once um, this cools down, I can show you, um, you're not going to really see the difference in me coating it twice. But I, like I said, I felt like it secures it more. It secures the image more. Okay, so our image has completely cooled down. So we are going to peel this bad boy. And yeah. And you can peel with confidence knowing that your image won't be messed up when you peel it once it's cool. If it's too hot and you try to peel it, you will get some resistance and you will get some, you will see some of the image peeling up because you didn't let it cool. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna press it for like a second, like eight seconds. And I'll show you guys the final results. And here you have it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me press this in. Final results. You can see the image looks good. It's vibrant. It's there. We did it. If you guys have any other questions or if you want me to make more videos like these, then comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel so that I can keep giving you guys more content like this. 
And I thank you for watching. And until next time, um, we'll see you guys.